Chase Field is still filling up right now here in Phoenix as Pool C begins with Colombia and Mexico. Home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Holbera Cabrera and Colombia will get the first swings in Pool C. And Cabrera, who's a 50 year old major league experience, international experience as a player and as a manager. His lineup, it's dotted with guys who have had nice years in the big leagues, talent, and success internationally. Oscar Mercado is in center field. Harold Ramirez will hit second in right. Gio Urshela at third base. Jorge Alfaro, the designated hitter. Elias Diaz, the catcher. Reynaldo Rodriguez is an international star and the MVP of the Caribbean Series last year. Jordan Diaz is at second. Jesus Mariaga in left. And Diane Frias is in the nine spot. And Buck Martinez, they're going to have to deal with the guy who has been a dominant pitcher. Look at the 2022 numbers for Urias. One of the best pitchers in baseball. He's got a great fastball, good curveball, an exceptional changeup. And as we mentioned, he has 23 postseason games under his belt. He's got an 8 and 3 record in postseason, so he should not be intimidated by this atmosphere. What? And away we go in a swing and a foul ball off the bat of Oscar Mercado. One thing we've learned in the World Baseball Classic, there's no waiting around. You have to get rolling from the get go, offensively, defensively, and on the mound. High, high pop up on the infield. Alan Trejo makes the catch. Now take a look at the defense behind Urias and it's really interesting because the rules in the major leagues that are new this year they don't pertain to this Bobby, tournament up, in the outfield a terrific defensive outfield Rosarena Thomas and Verdugo all big leaguers Trejo up the middle with Urias Paredes the Tampa Bay's third baseman Rowdy Telez at first base and Austin Barnes he caught 11 of Urias's starts last year with the Dodgers. Strike one to Harold Ramirez. Ramirez in right field. Parts of the last four years in Major League Baseball, 22 with the Rays. And he lifts a pop up, first base side. Rowdy Telez with a long run, and it's into the seats. Yeah, Ramirez started with the Pirates, and then he was traded to Toronto and never got to the big leagues with the Blue Jays, but he has bounced around. He hit 300 last year for Tampa Bay. He's not a real power hitter. He's much more of a line drive hitter. He had 24 doubles and six home runs last season for the Rays. Gio Urshela is on deck. And another fastball. That one fouled out of play. No pitch clock, as you noted. No larger bases. No shifting. 2022 Major League rules with full instant replay as well. Yeah, and you can see the defense. You're going to see them shift. There will be three defenders on either side of second at the course of this game. They will play guys to pull with the shifts. Roller up the middle. Urias on the first in time. And there's two outs. Julio Reyes with his pitches. You see, he throws a lot of fastballs. He's got great command of the fastball. Curveball is his primary pitch, but that changeup is very good for him. And you can see he didn't throw the sinker very often. They hit him, but all of three of his primary pitches, they hit just around 200. He's a dominant pitcher. He led the National League last year with a 216 earned run average, 40 and 10 in the big leagues over the last three seasons. Here's Urshela now. And he takes a fastball that is outside and the pro Mexican crowd <laughs> not real happy with Corey Blazer who's working home plate two major league umpires and two international umpires is the crew for game one here today in Phoenix. 
94 again. Yeah, and he's got a good fastball. Joe Urshela really kind of broke through a couple of years ago with the Yankees. He's always been noted as a glove first third baseman, but his first opportunity to play every day, he made the most of it. Hit 314 for the Yankees in 2018. And a guy certainly that has postseason experience. That fastball is up. That reminds you right there. This is not a spring training. Game. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't and, get comfortable. And these pitchers, these players, many of them have international experience and play in the offseason in winter leagues. 2 1 pitch, hit hard and on a line, and right at Isaac Paredes. Julio Urias, a nice, tidy 1 2 3 first. Mexico gets their first swings when we get back. Bottom of the first in Phoenix. Randy Rosarena drills one to center field. First pitch swinging. Bangs it off the wall. And into second base. Just like a postseason game for Rosarena. One pitch, a double, and Mexico is in business. Well, you knew he was going to be pumped up for this series. He's a terrific fastball hitter, and we saw him put on a show a couple of years ago in the postseason. He loves to hit early in the count, and he jumps all over this pitch and drives it off the wall in center field. A Rosa Reina from Cuba became a Mexican citizen. And he starts things off with a bang, a double off the wall in center. And the inning sets up now because you've got great bats behind him. Alex Verdugo is up next. And the changeup from the Bill Krismat, and that's his calling card. That's really transformed his career in the big leagues. And he gets strike one. It's 0-1-1. Krismat is basically a reliever. He's made one start in his big league career, and that was right here in the ballpark, Chase Field. Roller to the right side, and Verdugo gets him over. You're going to see a lot of this in this tournament where they have good team at bats. After the leadoff double, Verdugo comes with a RBI or ground ball to advance the runner. And this lineup comes with a lot of postseason experience. We talked about Orozarena, Verdugo as well. Manessis had the big year last year. Rowdy Telez, Isak Paredes is at third, Luis Arias. Is it second base? Alan Trejo at short. Alex Thomas, the Diamondback, feels comfortable in center field. And Austin Barnes, the Dodger, is in the nine spot. And Nabil Chrismat, the 28 year old from Barranquilla, 6'1, 220 pounds. And you can see that one start. A nice job by Diaz to get on the out. Side of that and knock it down and keep a Rosa Rain at third base. Um, Chris Matt, you see what he did with the Padres a year ago. 50 games. That start he made was kind of an emergency start. Blake Snell was the starter in the game. He was scratched before he threw a first pitch. And Chris Matt pitched in that game. Infield is in right now, Buck. Driven down the line, hooking, just foul. Joey Menendez is a real interesting story. 12 years in the minor leagues before he ever got his chance. He came up last year with the Nationals and put on a show. One of the best half seasons in the history of baseball. He hit 324, 13 homers, and 34 RBIs, and had a 930 OPS. He came up and just proved to everybody that all those seasons down in the minors were worthwhile. He's an RBI guy. McCovey like like McCovey in his rookie of the year season. And Chris Matt misses inside Rowdy Telez a left handed bat is on deck three infielders on the left side and they are in for Columbia trying to squeeze off a run. If there's any question how managers manage in this World Baseball Classic this is a great example. You have Mexico just trying to get a Rosarena to third to get a run, and you have we Colombia did. trying to squeeze that run at the plate. Yeah, I mean, you really have to play every inning like it's late in the game. You just can't afford to give up many runs early. Slow roller, and that's not going to get it done. Urshela across the diamond, and Krismat gets a huge out here. 
That's the big change up. He got oh, Manessis to oh, roll please. over on. Take a look at the defense for Columbia. Hey, since Mariaga in left field, then the manager thinks he's got a chance to be a star in this tournament. Oscar Mercado, the big leaguer in center, and Harold Ramirez from the race. He's in right. Urshel with a great glove at third. Frios and Diaz up the middle. Rodriguez, a veteran, 36 years old, over at first. And Diaz, the Colorado Rockies catcher behind the plate for Chris Matt. And here is the Milwaukee Brewers, Rowdy Telez. And there's the changeup. And he takes it outside. Now, Telez came up with the Blue Jays and really came up his first year with a bang, put on quite a show late in the season. 35 homers a year ago for the Brewers. Yeah, that was his breakout year. I mean, last year, 35. He's been to two postseasons with Milwaukee as well. And that's one of the things Benji Gill, the, the manager of this team Mexico talked about is all the guys that have played in the postseason. Yeah, it's really a terrific atmosphere and very much postseason like and Rowdy Telez questioning that last call. A Rosarena, a leadoff double. There's two outs. And the 2 1. And Telez takes outside. Telez, when he came to the plate, may have looked to the right side of the infield and said, wait a minute. I thought we were done with this. But in the World Baseball Classic, because they're still working those rules out in spring training, you can shift. 3 1. That's a foul ball. Telez doesn't like the call. Boy, he's hopping it. mad yeah. down the line. Boy, he sure is. He had a great view of it. That's Edwin Loiser from the Netherlands, and Telez running right up the first baseline. Said, man, that was a fair ball. Looked like it skipped just over the bag, and Telez felt like it was a fair ball, but the ump at first didn't agree with that. That's uh, Edwin Luisa out of the Netherlands. He is the first base ump. Doug Eddings is at second base. We told you Corey Blazer behind home plate. Blazer and Eddings, Major League umps, and Jairo Mendoza out of Nicaragua is the umpire at third. Let's see what he's got three and two. Soft pop up behind the plate. Diaz tosses the mask, and Nabil Krizmat works out of trouble. The leadoff double by Rose Arena, but no runs for Mexico. Underway in Pool C, Colombia and Mexico scoreless. Rowdy Telez came inches away from giving Mexico a 1 0 lead. Yeah, he did a shot down the first baseline. He thought it was fair. It looked like it may have skipped over the bank, but the umpire at first base waved it foul. And you can see his reaction. He thought <laughs> he was going to give Mexico an early lead. He popped up to the catcher on the next pitch. Well, he has a chance to chat it out with uh, Edwin Luisa <laughs> because uh, Telez is playing first base. And Arias opens the second. Jorge Alfaro, Elias Diaz, Reynaldo Rodriguez for Colombia. And Rios went one, two, three in the first. Now he can't go the whole game, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Number one, the Dodgers would like that. Mexico wouldn't do that. But there is a pitch limit in the first round of pool play. 65 pitches is the limit. The key is keep your pitch count inning by inning down and he had just 10 in the first. Yeah that's exactly what you want if you're managing these teams you want your pitcher to be very efficient and he has great command. He's always able to throw a strike with any of his three pitches and we mentioned his great fastball. Benji Gill understands that he's got an ace on the mound in Urias and now it's time for his club to score him some runs keep it close early on. And Aria strikes out Alfaro. That's that great changeup. He turns it over and it runs down and away from Alfaro. So he gets the big DH with a strikeout. And watch the movement on this pitch. It'll go down and away. And that's a changeup. And you can see the spin. He really kind of turns it over and acts like a screwball going down and away from the right handed hitters. And of course, he's very familiar with his catcher, Austin Barnes. They worked together for 11 starts last year for the Dodgers. Here's the catcher, Elias Diaz. Maracaibo. 
Venezuela, but with Colombian ties. And <laughs> say, hey, I've seen you a lot. And there's a lot of spirit in this team, especially new Latin American countries getting together. You see it during batting practice where they come in and say hello, and reunite with one another. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of pride on the line. And of course, Colombia played in the Caribbean World Series the last two years and they won it in 2021. That was a huge step forward for, for Colombia, the, the 22 Caribbean Series championship. MVP from that uh, tournament he was the first baseman for Colombia. He's on deck right now, Reynaldo Rodriguez. And then last year, Buck, they got to the final four. They qualified for the semifinals. The Dominican won it. Venezuela was second. Colombia edged out Mexico for third place. The Diaz fouls that one back. These two obviously face each other in the National League West. You see with the Rockies, he does have good power. He's known as a catcher with a really strong arm. And he had 18 home runs in 2021 for the Rockies. He started his career with the Pirates, spent five seasons with Pittsburgh up and down between the minor leagues, but he's established himself in Colorado. Now feel playing him to right center, infield almost straight up. Another thing that's not allowed in this tournament is pitch count. So you don't see pitcher and catcher using the communications to go back and forth and call signs. And you see how the defense is on the infield, basically straight up, slightly to pull. Two two. Another strikeout. And another tick up on the radar gun, 95. Yeah, emotions and adrenaline starting to kick in here for Urias as he elevated that fastball. And you always think about off speed pitch against him, but he really heats it up. Fastball, look at the location, up and out over the outer half. I mean, he can spot that fastball and move it around to all the different quadrants of the strike zone. You can see Diaz just late, he was overmatched with that heater. Rodriguez now in the air to left. A Rosarena is back in there and makes the catch. Another one, two, three tight inning for Julio Urias. Colombia, Mexico, scoreless. Bottom of the second inning, World Baseball Classic 2023. Just to remind you, other pool locations, they start playing Miami today as well. They've been going on in Tokyo and in uh, Taichung. Pitch count limits, we'll talk about that as we go. None of the new Major League rules of 2023 are here. You advance from round robin, and once you get out of the pool play, Buck, the difference this year is it's one and done after that. Yeah, and that's when it really intensifies the pressure, of course, but everybody's focused on getting out of this first yes. round. I mean, that's the big challenge. Indeed. And there are five teams in each pool. Isak Paredes, the third baseman, leads it off for Mexico, and he drills one, but that's going to be foul. That's a Paredes hit 20 home runs last year for the Tampa Bay Rays. And he did a nice job. He kind of really fits what Tampa Bay is all about. He plays third base, good to contact hitter, and he got a little power. Started his career with the Tigers, came up as a 21-year-old in 2020. Paredes takes outside, Luis Urias, and Alan Trejo to follow. Bottom two. Cruz Matt in some trouble right away. His first pitch was hit 400 and 15 feet off the wall in center field by Randy Rosarena for a double. That is strike three called. And we check in with JP Morosi. JP? 
Thanks, Rich. Nabil Chrismat enjoying the support of family here in Phoenix. That is his wife, Maria, their daughter, Nicole, who was born in December of 2021. Last April, Rich, he made history along with Jorge Alfaro as the first ever starting battery of two Colombian-born players. Yeah, with the Padres, that's uh, pretty cool. And as Buck pointed out, it was in this ballpark in an emergency because of a an injury and the irony here is he's making a start because of an injury Jose Quintana with a rib injury was going to be the number one starter for Colombia hard ground ball backhanded there Urshela across got him how about that oh my what a play and you can see the appreciation of his pitcher by that terrific play we've seen this for years with Urshela he's a terrific defender Never really got a chance to swing the bat on a regular basis, but look at the range here. And then he takes a couple of strides and jumps and fires a high throw right on the money across the diamond. One of the best third basemen in all of baseball. It goes without saying that this is not spring training baseball. <laughs> and these players, these pitchers, Knowing that they're going to play in the World Baseball Classic, start their spring a lot earlier. Some never stop during the offseason. And so by the time they arrive here, they are ramped up and ready to roll. Yeah, spring training camps began early for the participants of the WBC. Anybody that was on a roster of one of the Federation teams went to camp early about an extra week so they could get a jump on their spring training preparation. This is Trejo. A Colorado Rocky San Diego State. The outstanding college baseball program. And he swings and misses Chris Matt has got such a good change up. It's a two seam change up as well. It, it, it's not your garden variety change up. Yeah and it's got a lot of late movement and he'll throw it about 50 percent of the time. And he shakes off a couple pitches. He wants to throw the fastball here and locates Whew. it perfectly. You know, he's not going to throw an awful lot of fastballs, but you can see Team Mexico is thinking about that changeup, and they're doing a good job of mixing in the fastball effectively. That's what he got Paredes looking with fastball to start the inning. Got him. Changeup, 83 miles an hour. Chris Matt matching Urias right now. Colombia. Mexico scoreless into the third. Welcome back to the World Baseball Classic. As we mentioned, the first time Julio Urias is pitching for the Mexican national team, but Rich, he has always pitched. For Mexico here he was on the field after getting the last out of the 2020 World Series with La Bandera Mexicana. Oh, well look you know JP Benji Gill talked to us about playing in the World Baseball Classic and pressure and playing in the postseason as Diaz hits that one high in the air and it's out of play. You look up and down this lineup we talked about a Rosa Reina and Verdugo Telez. Paredes there are guys that have played in the postseason in the major leagues and that really is invaluable in this tournament. Yeah it sure is it makes you understand the magnitude of these games and you certainly get into it. You know early on in 2006 of course I managed Team USA and we weren't really sure about the intensity and everything else but I think now this being the fifth WBC everybody understands the intensity and how you have to prepare you have to get started early on and. A lot of these guys have gotten a lot of extra at bats. A lot of these Latino players have played in winter ball. So they've been able to really hone their skills and get ready for this tournament. And I think that intensity, which you and I have seen firsthand, which everybody saw on television, especially in 2017, that has helped attract more players that are banging on the doors of their country's baseball federation or their manager's office trying to get into it. On the ground to the right side. Diaz is out number one. Urias keeps rolling. The last out of 2020. Pay attention to who's behind the plate. It's Austin Barnes. Of course, that World Series was in Texas. Uh, 
the COVID season, but the emotions was genuine for sure. And Arias, as we mentioned, he's been in 23 postseason games, and he's got an 8-3 and three record. He got the save in game six of that 2020 World Series. But these two have been united over the last few seasons. Yeah, they've worked a lot together, obviously. Jesus Mariaga for Colombia. Urias has seen seven hitters. He's retired all of them. And that one fouled back out of play. Colombia believes that Mariaga could really have a great tournament here. He's played in independent ball the last two seasons. He signed with the Diamondbacks but was released and he hasn't had a contract yet but physically great athlete good speed swings the bat well as we mentioned he's played in Gary Indiana Independent League the last two seasons and don't dismiss independent baseball now because there are a lot fewer minor league teams now than there were a couple years ago Woo. the minor leagues contracted and so there's there's a lot of really good players who are playing in independent ball because there aren't that many minor league jobs or slots right now. There's a look at Holbert Cabrera. Eight major league seasons. No swing. Arias thought he went around. You can see his reaction to the umpires call at first base. He threw him a good breaking ball and Mariaga was able to check his swing and there's a spin on that breaking ball. I tell you what, that's tough from that angle. This will give you a better idea. Did he commit? No, in my mind, he checked his swing. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. Third strikeout. And Arias looks like he's in mid-season form right now. Well, this is a big season for him. He's a free agent, and he's only 26 years old. Boy, he knows how to use this fastball. He elevates it. And look at the location of that pitch right at the top of the zone. And after the breaking ball earlier in the at bat, Mariaga is late on that high heater. Well, he can locate that fastball with the best of them. Diane Frias, the shortstop for Columbia in the nine spot. Three strikeouts, no walks, first pitch. That's a strike. Frias out of the Cleveland organization. Last year, a really nice year in single A baseball. Good, good eye, good contact rate. That's the scouting report on him. Yeah, he's listed at 5'7. He had eight steals and 13 attempts, and he's got a pretty good glove. He played at Lynchburg in the Cleveland system. Ball and a strike. You know, Benji Gill finally getting a chance to have Rios on his team. He saw him when he was 16 years old pitching. He thought he was a lot older and he said well why why isn't he on the team. Why isn't he with us. He managed. He's not old enough. No. <laughs> he managed <laughs> Team Mexico in the Olympics back in 2020. So he's been part of that uh, international Mexican baseball scene for a while now. And of course a, a World Series champ with the Angels in 2002 played with Texas and the Angels and he played back in the inaugural World Baseball Classic back in 2006 and a swing and a miss and Arias has punched out four nine up nine down four strikeouts Julio Urias is rolling. Bill Krismat has thrown 27 pitches. He's been very effective as well. Let's take a look at his pitch arsenal. The changeup he uses half the time. It's such a great changeup. Everybody's looking for it, and they still can't connect. Fastball is four seamer, 244 against that fastball. And there he steals a strike with a slow breaking ball. Pretty effective pitch for him. 8 9 1 for Mexico. Alec Thomas, the center fielder. Soft one hopper. Diaz nicely done gets the out. 
Well, that's a good play. You know, he kind of hung in there, played a little bit off to the side, but he was able to backhand it. And once he caught it, it was academic. Thomas is retired. Watch the hop here, and he kind of turned to the side, but he was able to backhand it easily and makes a nice play of it. That ball looked like it had a chance to skip by him. Only been one base runner in this game so far. That was the leadoff man for Mexico, Randy Rosarena. And it, I mean, it, it speaks to, and just watching the, the inning that has followed that inning, it shows you why both managers were aggressively managing after that double. Mexico yeah. just wanted to get a Rosarena over and get him in. Verdugo rolled one to the right side, which is wide open here for Austin Barnes. That got a Rosarena to third. Then the infield came in and cut off a run. Frias crossed the diamond in time. And so Chrisman hasn't been as dominant as Julio Arias in terms of strikeouts, but a ton of ground balls already after the double by a Rosarena. Yeah, it just reflects the ability to turn that change up over and get the ball bottom half of the bat. Not much real solid contact, just that first pitch double by Rosarena, and here he is again. Not sure he's going to get a fastball on that first pitch <laughs> like he did, and it's a changeup, and it's down, and the count's 1 0. He's a dynamic player that can do an awful lot of things. He can steal bases, had 32 stolen bases last year, hit 41 doubles, and 20 home runs. You saw in that sequence Elias Diaz looking up at a Rosarena. Before he gave the sign. That's one other piece of technology that is not in the World Baseball Classic. Pitchcom is not. Because obviously, international teams don't have that technology, haven't used that technology. So, no pitchcom. Catchers and pitchers old school. Although, one of the ironies was for the national teams, USA, Mexico, playing against. Spring training major league teams. The major league teams were using it in those games, but the international teams could not. Yeah, they had to get ready for this tournament without having that ability with use pitch count. Randy Rosarena, he will sit on pitches. He's a terrific fastball hitter, but every once in a while he'll sit back and look for that off speed pitch. I think he's probably sitting on changeup right here. It's a high pop up. Diaz for a look. You know, you really wonder about what kind of scouting reports these international teams have, but they have sent scouts out and watched the games played, exhibition games. Each team played two exhibition games, and they have pretty extensive scouting reports. They see heat maps for hitters' strengths, and they'll set up a pretty good game plan. Orlando Cabrera on the right there. He's a bench coach here for Colombia. His brother is the manager, and there's another great changeup from Krismat. And a Rose Arena goes down. Nabil Krismat and Julio Urias are on it. In the desert, Colombia, Mexico, scoreless. Julio Urias has been perfect through three innings. He's only thrown 33 pitches, and he's pitched, mixed his pitches very effectively. There he gets out far on a changeup. Then he elevates the fastball for a strikeout. Another good fastball upstairs, and he mixes in that slow breaking ball for another strikeout. Four strikeouts through the first nine batters in this inning, and he's only thrown 33 pitches. Second time through now for Colombia. Mercado, Ramirez, Urshela. The top of the order, no strikeouts in that first inning, but two in the second and two in the third. And the pitch count is tight for both starters. Sarias opened the inning at 33, Krismat 38, which is great news for Holbert Cabrera and Benji Gill because they don't have to worry about going and mixing and matching in the bullpen. 65 is the pitch limit in this, the uh, Pool C opening round. That catches the outside corner. Arias is in midseason form. He's throwing all of his pitches exactly where the catcher wants him. He asks for a fastball away. He dots the eye on the outside corner. Elevate. He can do that too. He looks ready to start the regular season. 
This is his second home outside of Dodger Stadium. His career ERA here is one. For his career, he's 49 and 17 with a very impressive 282 earned run average. 137 big league games, almost 600 innings pitched. Sharp ground ball, Trejo in time. And there's one out here in the fourth. This is through three innings now of Urias. You can see how he just fills the strike zone up with pitches. His slurve has been effective for four outs. Changeup, he's gotten two outs of the changeup and the four seam fastball upstairs. A couple of strikeouts upstairs with that good fastball. He's a great example of a guy, and that swing caught Austin Barnes on the back swing. Urias is a, a great example of a guy who has great stuff but doesn't throw 99 to 100. Ball moves, has great command. Well, another thing we talk about is impending free agency. He's 26 years old. He's got a terrific delivery, and he's not a max effort guy. That speaks very well to his longevity. Ramirez swings and misses. Austin Barnes, you call for an off speed pitch. The catcher hangs in there a little bit, and you can see that high follow through of Ramirez, how it clips him on his mask. That's why catchers are wearing these batting helmets now underneath their catching mask. 0 2 swing and a miss. Ramirez goes down on strikes. So three and two thirds. A perfect baseball for Julio Urias and five strikeouts in the game. Yeah, last summer when Benji Gill was traveling around the big leagues, Urias ran into him and said, I am starting game one for you, right? <laughs> I mean, he wanted to pitch for Team Mexico. You know, as JP Morosi mentioned, this is the first time he's ever had a chance to pitch for the national team, and he's making the most of it. And you heard JP talk about the hometown, same hometown for Urias and Benji Gill. Urias said, you know, one day I hope to pitch for for the team. That's where Benji Gill manages. And Benji Gill says, I hope you don't. <laughs> here's, here's Gio Urshela. Not that he didn't want him on his staff, but he's like, hey, look, man. You're the <laughs> you're one of the premier starters in all the baseball. You're gonna be in the big leagues for a long time. And too, you know what? The players always think about playing in front of their hometown fan. Right, man. That's always a big deal, no matter where you play. Fastball is up. You know, Benji talked about winter ball and how important it has been over the history of the game for players to develop. And years ago, before the salaries really jumped, everybody would go down to winter ball and compete. Big leaguers would do it on a regular basis, just to supplement their major league salaries. And it was very competitive. That ball's hit well down the right field line, but foul. That one of the best swings against Urias from Gio Urshela with Alfaro on deck. One hit in this game, it was the Randy Arozarena 415 foot double on the first pitch. And he saw leading off the bottom of the first. Got him. Buried it. Barnes blocked it and gets the out. Best case scenario right now for Mexico and Benji Gill. Julio Urias is cooking with a low pitch count in a scoreless game. Both starters economically are getting deeper in this game. First round, 65 pitches is the limit. You can finish a hitter, say you get to 65 and it's a one and one count, you can finish that hitter, but you have to come out after that at bat. Quarterfinals, you get a little more rope. Championship round, you're up to 95. Verdugo, outside corner, almost, from Krismat for strike one. 
I love the way both of these pitchers are mixing their pitches so effectively. You know, the book on Krismat is 50% change-ups, but he's using his fastball very effectively. We've seen him earlier in this game steal a couple of strikes with his slow curveball to start at bats. I think the catchers are doing a great job. That one bounces up there. Verdugo, a uh, Arizona guy, Tucson home. And one of the two that Benji Gill says is the soul of the team. He and Rowdy Telez are the guys that keep everybody loose. Hit hard, diving stop. Diaz on his feet gets the out. Well, we have seen three outstanding defensive plays by the Colombian infield. Urshela at third base, and Diaz has made a couple of good plays at second base already in this game. And you know what? When the pitchers are throwing a lot of strikes, the defense is on their toes. They don't get lazy. You think about ball one, ball two. Pitchers are throwing strikes, so the defense has to be ready for action. And they have responded very well so far in this game. Pitchers love it. Here is Manessis again. You talked about his uh, long road to the big leagues, 12 years in the minors. Played in Japan, played in the Mexican League, was undrafted. He was signed as a free agent by Atlanta when it all began in 2011. Smacks that one into center and it falls for a hit. And the second hit for Mexico. Yeah, Manessis is just one of those guys that has always been a pretty good hitter, but. Nobody really gave him an extended opportunity. He went to Japan and didn't have an awful lot of experience over there. But he stays on this pitch, and it looks like a little bit of a cutter. He hits right off the end of the bat, but it drops in front of Mercado in center field. The center fielder thought he had a shot to make the play, but wisely plays it on a hop. Now, Telez, who popped out back in the first. For his style and the way he plays the game, he has the perfect first name. Rowdy. 6'4, <laughs> 280. Sacramento, his hometown. Elk Grove, to be specific, Elk Grove High School. Time out. The funny thing about Verdugo and Telez. Is they they keep everybody loose, but they get on each other as well. It's 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 that's part of the whole fun of this bunch. Yeah, Rowdy's dad, who's Mexican, his grandparents came from Mexico, and Verdugo grew up in Texas, and he's they they both are really very high spirited guys that get on each other and keep things light in the clubhouse. And that's a hard thing to do, Buck. You managed in this event. Is how do you develop chemistry and camaraderie with a group that, for some of them, are you know haven't really played with each other much at all? Yeah, Benji Gill addressed that earlier today when he said, you know what, you have to try to put events together. So Into the bat, mix. and Krismat has some issues with it. Finally, corrals it, picks it up, and fires the first, and Telez is out. Mexico for the second time in this game has a runner in scoring position, but there's two outs. Yeah, and. That was another changeup, and it's cued right off the end of the bat, and he boots it initially, but didn't panic. Stayed with it and had plenty of time. As Tolos is thrown out by a pretty good margin, but now you've mentioned Manessa's in scoring position for Paredes. Isaac Paredes, another Tampa Bay Ray that uh, we've seen a lot of already in just these three innings. That Mexico's got. A good representation of Rays. Hammers it. Foul. And that's the one of the tantalizing things about a, a righty on righty changeup is when it when a hitter really gets a hold of it but pulls it foul. Yeah. I mean, it feels good, but it's just a long strike. Long strike, and that's I think something we're seeing more and more of is pitchers are throwing that right on right, left on left changeup a little more consistently now. And it's an effective pitch. A one is down low. Paredes 
as we mentioned he's a line drive hitter but he's prone to strike out at 67 strikeouts in 337 at bats and obviously in this situation one put bat on the ball that start he made here is only major league start last year he threw 53 pitches that's a career high this is pitch number 50 about to arrive. And again the limit in pool play is 65 for any pitcher. I think both managers if they had to make a change right now they'd be very pleased with what they've gotten from each of these two starters. Without question. Couple pretty good shortstops in that shot. Orlando Cabrera, Benji Gill. Ground ball, base hit, left field. Mariaga is charging. Manessis is coming. Throw to the plate. Safe. Mexico, a 1 0 lead. Sock Paredes comes through with a big two out RBI single, first run of the ball game. Manessis advanced to second on that little number off the bat of Tales, and Mariaga makes a pretty good attempt here. He charges it very well, comes up throwing, but it drifts just a bit on the outside. Had that been online right over the plate, it was going to be bang, bang. Good slide by Manessis as he goes to the inside of home plate. And slides away from the catcher. Ooh. Boy, I tell you, I don't know did if he, he ever touched toe, plate? did he? Looked like his toe might have pushed him off the top of that plate. Paredes at first. And this is Luis Urias. And then look at the slide. Watch his right toe. Does he ever touch the plate? Yeah, it looked like he might have got the tip of home plate right with the end of his right foot. Pretty close. The window for review has closed. 20 seconds. <laughs> Each team has one challenge up to the eighth inning, and then they have umpires' reviews they can utilize. Yeah, and teams do have a, a replay coach that has to make that decision within 20 seconds. 3 0 now in what really feels like the last inning for Krismat. Holbert Cabrera. The pitch count is at 54. The limit is 65. And so this inning has accomplished two things a run, obviously. But it's pushed the pitch count up. He started at 38. And now the managers and pitching coaches and bullpen are all in motion. Yeah, talking about their options and what do you do? And it's different. Runner goes. The runner. Swing and a miss. And the throw not in time. But Ennis with a stolen base. Yeah, the throw was into the base runner because his throw ran on him a bit to the first base side of second. And Diaz, Jordan Diaz, the second baseman, came over and made a play on it. Watch you know, how they throw. Runs to the first base side of the bag and takes the infield away from second base. I think that ball hit the runner. That saved it from going into center field. There might be a brief ceremony here because Paredes has never stolen a base in the big leagues. But he has one here. That one in the air to left. Mariaga. Is in and he makes the catch, but Mexico with a two out run and a one nothing lead. We are in Pool C here in Phoenix, and they, I guess, technically are also in Pool C. Although this may be the only pool that has a pool. 
in right field in Arizona. They took the pool out of Miami in left field that uh, was there when they opened that ballpark. Julio Arias, if you're just joining us, has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, all of that. Alfaro, Diaz, Rodriguez. For Columbia here in the fifth, and the pitch count, you can see it 46 pitches. Driven, left field, hit well, hit deep, off the wall. Alfaro wasn't running hard. Now he has to kick it into gear, and he cruises in with a double. Well, what a response to Mexico scoring a run. Alfaro with a leadoff double here in the fifth. Alfaro had a great spring before he joined Team Mexico. He was 7 for 10 with the Red Sox in spring training with a pair of doubles. And here it looks like a changeup kind of sits over the plate, got too much of the plate, and Alfaro just missed hitting a home run. Hit way halfway up the fence in left center. He thought it was out. Uh, he's fortunate. I never could understand that. Why do you have to celebrate a home run before it goes over the fence? I know. You know, I, I did not hit enough of those to really weigh in on this. <laughs> so oh, I never hit one I could stand and watch. <laughs> Here's Diaz now. Let's see if Colombia plays it the way that Mexico played the Arena double, which led off the first, and they. That was Verdugo really trying to roll over and, and pull a ground ball. Here you've got Diaz with a veteran hitter on deck and Reynaldo Rodriguez. Alfaro not the fleetest of foot though at second base. That one's fouled back to the screen. Yeah, he wasn't trying to get him over there. He no. was trying <laughs> to get him in. He had a good cut at that high breaking ball. And again, there's 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 a hidden agenda here for Colombia. First priority get a run. Second priority make Urias throw a lot of pitches this inning and make this his last inning. I'm out. Yeah that pitch right there. Oh, now it looks like Barnes got something in his eye. That ball was in the dirt, and the umpire quickly called for the training staff to come out. Remember, he got popped on a backswing. Take a look here. This ball in the dirt. And you can see, oh, it hit him underneath that extension on his mask, caught him in the throat. Right on the collarbone. There was a time in baseball where the flap that hung down was popular. Then many of the masks were extended down below with that little extension of the face mask. Now Steve Yeager's the guy that started that as he had an injury Why, and he thought he was you? going to put a little flap down there, an extension, kind of a plastic water, flap that was tied with rawhide and it was loose. Now catchers have that mask that has the extension you can see the umpires flap there and that's the one to protect the umpire and that's more or less what Steve Yeager started to use as a member of the Dodgers. Yeah that was a scary injury and long ago back in the 70s where a broken bat came he was on deck and the bat stuck and got him in the throat. All right uh, Barnes looks like he's ready to go. Arias Probably going to get to throw a pitch, maybe for Barnes' benefit, but probably for his benefit as well. After standing around a bit, <laughs> Barnes said, "Hey, look, enough of this. I'm ready. Let's go." Ball and a strike. It's a big moment here, middle of the game. Arias had been perfect through four innings, dominant, and then he struck out six. But Alfaro banged one off the wall on a shot he thought was going out. Diaz now, outfield towards right center, infield pretty much straight up. And the fastball is outside. And if he was thinking about going to the right side, that was a pitch that you. 
you might choose but from the first swing he took he's just trying to hit a ball hard someplace. Breaking ball he does hit it hard down the line into the corner Alfaro will score Columbia has tied it. Elias Diaz. 51 RBIs last year for the Rockies and he comes up with a big one here for Columbia to tie the game. Mexico scored a run in the bottom of the fourth and back to back doubles here in the fifth they finally get to Urias. That one again sails over the heart of the plate and he didn't miss it. An eight year big leaguer comes through with a big hit for Columbia and we're tied. And now Reynaldo Rodriguez the 36 year old high deep in the corner a Rosa Reina and it's gone a two run shot from perfect game to three runs. The MVP of the Caribbean Series in 2022 blasts one to left. And it's 3 1. Rodriguez, a longtime minor leaguer, as Rich mentioned, 36 years old. He's played over 1,500 games in the minor leagues and has 1,581 hits, but none as big as this two run home run here in the fifth. Urias was dominant as he was perfect through four innings. Double double home run and just like that Colombia has a two run lead. Ground ball backhanded by Paredes fires across and in case you're wondering you may be saying why is this announcer going nuts. It's the fifth inning of the first game of pool C. This is a hugely important game. For these two countries. For a lot of reasons as you see this one just off the foul pole it puts the winner of this game in the driver's seat to getting to Miami and advancing the first tiebreaker as well if in pool play they both end up with the same record is head to head so you kind of get a win and you get a leg up in the tiebreaker if you win this first game. To give you an idea how big this is for Colombia tomorrow they have an off day on Monday they play Great Britain. Mexico plays the USA tomorrow. Yeah <laughs> and that game is sold out yeah. tomorrow I mean, night that, here. I mean things get intense right away. Line drive to right. And Verdugo is there and he makes the catch. Boy that, that's four balls in this inning that have been hit right on the button. Yeah. Colombia has made a nice adjustment. You take another look at the home run by Rodriguez. Bobo let's go Colombia. Big you know, two run home run and the emotions running high for Team Colombia. Were it not for an injury to Tito Polo or an issue I believe it was a visa issue with Tito Polo Rodriguez might not have been here. He was a late add and as, as we've noted he, he doesn't have major league experience long time minor leaguer but he's been great in international play. Yeah he's played basically all over the world but the big leagues. Now the pitch count is irrelevant right yeah. because Columbia is knocking Arias around 
Yeah, and he's thrown 58 pitches, so this is going to be his last inning. Only three hits in the game for each team, and Columbia has the two biggest hits in the game so far. That one foul back and out of play. I mean, that's why these tournaments are so interesting because it can turn in a flash. It looked like Columbia wasn't going to get anything off Arias. And here in the fifth inning, double, double home run. Brand new ball game. Greg Sanchez ready to come in for Team Mexico. 2 2. It's such an emotional roller coaster for these ball clubs. And what Chris Matt, what a job he has done in this game. His first and only big league start came right in this ballpark, and now he has come up with another great start. And his team is ahead of Mexico. Joey Manessis, he had a Frias single and a score to run. In the air to right, Verdugo is there. And makes the catch. Julio Arias was perfect through four with six punch outs. A double by Alfaro. That opened things. Diaz the double. And then Reynaldo Rodriguez, a two run homer. And that is Colombia. The oldest player in uniform for either team today is this man, Reynaldo Rodriguez. He is the reason why Colombia now holds a 3-1 lead in this tournament opener for both teams. And Rich, you talked about it, the Caribbean Series back in 2022. He was the MVP, a long history of him succeeding on the grandest stage. His professional baseball journey began back in 2006, the same year of the inaugural World Baseball Classic. Oh, what a story here. And JP, I mean, talk about the the irony of him being here because he, at first, he wasn't supposed to be here. Correct, and it was a late roster change made by Colombia, but there is a trust by Holbert Cabrera, the manager of this team, in what Reynaldo Rodriguez can do. Reynaldo actually is the son of a longtime amateur baseball power hitter in Colombia by the name of Inocencio Rodriguez. Ah. Yeah, you could you could just hear it in Holbert Cabrera's voice when he said, "Yeah, Tito Polo's not here, but <laughs> we've got a guy." Breaking ball, swing, and a foul tip. We've got Reynaldo Rodriguez coming with a big smile. He said, and boy, did he know something, as John Romero has taken over on the mound for yeah, Colombia. Romero, he's got some time with the Nationals last year with the Twins. Got into five innings of work. And he's had some biceps problems, but obviously he's healthy and he's ready to help here now. He's pitching with a lead for Columbia in the fifth. Three pitch pitcher, mid 90s four seamer, a slider, and a changeup that he throws about 15% of the time. Two and two to Trejo. And he takes it now can Mexico answer. Mexico got on the board in the fourth. On an RBI single by Isaac Paredes. And that was it. Now Bill Krismat looked really good the first three innings. And he gave up the two out RBI single in the fourth. And there you see Krismat. Talking it over. With Walter Miranda. The pitching coach of Columbia. Yeah, this is an important inning for Columbia. Obviously, after you take a lead, you want to put down a shutdown inning, and you're in the bottom third of the Mexico lineup. So it's important for Romero not to encourage Mexico that they can get right back in this game. Three, two. And it's fouled back. You know, it's really cool about this game so far. We haven't had a walk in the game. <laughs> Pitchers have thrown a lot of strikes. They've kept the defense on their toes. We've seen some terrific defense and some clutch hitting by Columbia, obviously. Now, you know what's going to happen if this pitch is outside, but. First walk. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> it's like saying, boy, this game is moving right along. Here's the 3-2, and it it's is. outside. Way to go, Buck. <laughs> Out of breath. All right, well, that's good news for Mexico. And Benji Gill did say that he wants to put the game in motion. He has speed. They stole a bag. Did Mexico back in the fourth. And Trejo is aboard. It's a strong arm behind the plate with Elias Diaz. Yeah, and he made a poor throw to second. And the least likely base stealing threat, Isaac Paredes, stole that base last inning. This guy is going to be a really nice major league player. Alec Thomas, who grew up in a, uh, a clubhouse, so to speak, not with his dad as a player or a manager or a coach. His dad was a strength coach. I guess that is a coach, but a strength coach for the White Sox. And he takes up. One thing to think about is the three batter rule is in place in this tournament. So Romero's got to face at least three batters in this inning. And Columbia already has their bullpen warming up. And Columbia's got lefties, lots of them in that bullpen. And five left handers down there for Hobart Cabrera. Hit hard on the ground. Rodriguez has it, gets the out at second. And Thomas, who runs well, is at first base. And so Colombia gets an out. Mexico has a runner at first. And here's the bottom of the order and Austin Barnes with a Rosarena coming up. Rodriguez makes a good throw and he gets down make sure that ball doesn't get past him and then he makes a strong accurate throw. This is the base runner and all they can get is that lead runner. You gotta keep this ball in front of you. Thomas runs well no chance for the return throw to first base so he's aboard for the number nine hitter. He stole bases in the minor leagues just getting his feet wet in the big leagues with Arizona at 113 games last year. This might be a good time for Mexico to play hit and run with Barnes at the plate he can handle the bat he got speed at first base and your leadoff man's on deck. There you see Almeida loosening up one of the five lefties they have down in their pen. Not a big lead by Thomas. Long wait by Romero. Austin Barnes, eight year big leaguer with the Dodgers. He's had some big moments. Tony Perez Chica, the third base coach. He's with the Diamondbacks. He knows this situation very well in this ballpark. One zero, -oh. and it's hit foul. Great crowd here, Mexico and Colombia. Later tonight, Great Britain plays their very first World Baseball Classic game. And they have to play a, a ragtag group <laughs> from the United States. Not a lot of names that you've ever heard of, you know, guys that are pretty anonymous. Barnes awaits. Ball and a strike. One out. Thomas at first. JP. Crowd tonight should be a great one as well. It should be indeed. Rich, right now the estimates are that the attendance this evening could be as many as 40,000 fans. And uh, have you checked the ticket market, JP, for tomorrow night's Mexico U.S. matchup? Well, the word was from Benji Hill that even though Canelo Alvarez is one of the most famous athletes in Mexico with a great boxer from Guadalajara, he said, Canelo, I'm sorry, I can't find a ticket for you. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he's not the only one looking for him. One one. Ooh, that's a really nice pitch. Uh, you see the pitcher. He questioned the umpire, and boy, I tell you what, Corey Blazer didn't waste any time answering him. But if you watched on pitch tracks, that pitch had the knees. And Blazer 
quickly came behind home plate and said the ball is down. Let's take a look at the pitch. Looked like it might have caught the bottom of the zone. Romero reacts, and so does the umpire. It's down. I called it down. That's the universal sign for down. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is running on the pitch, the 2 1, and it's fouled back. There you go. That's what we were thinking with a number nine hitter, Barnes, who can handle a the bat. They put the runner in motion, Thomas at first base. And what you're trying to do in this situation is to stay out of a double play to give a Rosarina a chance to hit this inning with a man on. Tony Perez cheek up. Thomas across the diamond. Reynaldo Rodriguez with a two run homer, a three run fifth for Columbia to take the lead. The Dodgers, Austin Barnes at the plate. The Diamondbacks, Alec Thomas at first. Mexico trying to answer back. High chopper at short. Frias loads up and gets him at first base. Pretty good call by the shortstop. Frias not chancing a throw to second with Thomas and his good speed, so they take the sure out at first. Let's go back to that pitch to Barnes. It looked like a strike from Romero's perspective. The home umpire felt like it was down. But to watch where it crosses the knee, it looked like it might have been high enough from that angle. But Romero didn't get the call, and Corey Blazer took exception to the reaction that the pitcher had. Are you good? <laughs> you okay now? A lot of emotion in this series for everybody. This is a big moment with the Rosarena at the plate. First base is open, but you got Verdugo on deck. Though you have a lefty ready in the bullpen, if a Rosarena were to somehow end up at first base, a very loud double off the wall in center field in the first, and a strikeout in the third. John Romero drops in a strike. Well, a Rosa Reina, you can tell a lot by his body language. He was taken all the way, wanted to get a look at Romero before he commits in this at bat with a runner in scoring position. A Rosa Reina fled Cuba in 2015, settled in Mexico, and officially became a Mexican citizen. Last April. And of course, has had just a mercurial start to his career, starting with that 2020 postseason. Oh, two. It's out. Now, a Rosa Reina actually got to the big leagues for the first time in 2019 with the Cardinals and he got postseason experience there as well he sure did and the thing about him is that he's just one of those guys that really got a chance in Tampa Bay Tampa Bay does a better job than anybody in baseball at identifying players in other organizations One two liner deep left gone. It's tied. First base was open. The Romero got in front of him right away, 0-2. And the, <laughs> the home run sombrero in a 3-3 game. Randy Rosarena has 11 home runs in 31 big league postseason games. He loves the big stage. He comes through again. Hit the first pitch of the game off the wall in center. And he goes deep with two outs and a man on. He loves the fastball and he keeps it fair just over the fence down the left field line. 
You don't think the players think this is a big deal? You're mistaken. This is a big deal. There are not many better fastball hitters in baseball than Randy Arozarena. He can get on a fastball. Pitching change for Columbia. 3-3 three, three. in the fifth. What a fifth inning this has been. Three for Colombia, two for Mexico, a 3 3 game. And Verdugo oh. takes the second pitch outside from the lefty, Adrian Almeida. Randy Rosarena against John Romero, a righty. Almeida was ready in the pen. And the three batter minimum had passed. He could have come in and faced Verdugo had they walked or maybe pitched a little. With a little more caution to a Rosarena. Yeah, you know, you either walk him or you pitch to get him out. You don't allow a young pitcher to try to pitch around a guy. Robert Cabrera made the decision and he said, you know what, I want you to pitch to a Rosarena before they throw him a fastball. And that's what he loves to hit. Diaz on to first in time. Inning over. The lead was short lived for Colombia because Randy Arozarena. This is a postseason game for him, and you know what he does in the postseason. He crushes just like that. 3 3 onto the sixth in the desert. This is a this is a home game for Mexico. Let's face it, big crowd here. And a Rosarena, when he came back out to left field after erasing the 3 1 deficit. A hero's welcome. That's awesome. Left field line, left field bleachers, all acknowledging a Rosarina in that dramatic two run home run. So here we are back where it all started. Even. 3 3 now. Luis Sessa out of the bullpen in relief of Julio Urias. Sessa began his career in the big leagues with the Yankees back in 2016. He's been parts of Five seasons, six seasons actually with New York. In the last two, he's been in Cincinnati making a bid to get a spot in that Reds starting rotation. For his career, he's made 29 career big league starts. Got seven years of big league experience. And some postseason experience as well. Oscar Mercado is the hitter, and he takes outside. Julio Arias was absolutely dominant. To start this game, perfect through four with six strikeouts, and then it all fell apart when Columbia hit three balls exceedingly hard, a couple doubles, and a two run homer. Chopper Paredes throws out Mercado, and there's one out here in the Colombian sixth inning. Man, and the Defense has really been keen so far in this game, and we have seen some fine defensive plays. And, and you got to give credit to the pitchers that thrown a lot of strikes. So everybody on the infield is engaged on every pitch. Mentioned Sessa, and you mentioned his postseason experience. He has been in five postseason games, all with the New York Yankees over a span of three different series. And it's interesting how these players commit to their countries. You know he's trying to make the Reds rotation. He leaves spring training, a chance to come down here and pitch for his country. It's pretty, pretty great opportunity. Harold Ramirez, who's bounced out and struck out, fouls it at the plate. You know, for Colombia, some of the steam was taken out of this matchup when they found out that Quintana. Was not going to be able to to be their ace to start it against Urias, and a lot of people said, "Well, boy, that's going to really hurt them." 
But the fact of the matter is for Holbert Cabrera if they can win this game without Quintana they weren't going to have him for the rest of this pool play for the next three games because the starting pitcher can't come back. Sharp ground ball Trejo gets Ramirez. Yeah, Quintana's dealing with a stress reaction in his ribs. Uh, he is not healthy enough to participate in this tournament. But last time in 2017, he was a big part of Colombia. He can really pitch. He's one of those guys that understands how to pitch, changes speeds, does a lot of good things. And that was against Team USA. He is a guy that was going to start this game, and it was kind of a marquee matchup. Two classy big league left handers matching up, but that wasn't the case with the injury. Sessa, that's off the end of the bat, and a soft hop for the Luis Odias. Three outs, three ground ball outs. And a quick sixth inning for Colombia in a 3 3 game. Three three ball game, bottom of the sixth, with a runner in second and a base open. They choose to pitch to Randy Rosarena. First pitch, a changeup. Then he gets a fastball. Now they're trying to get him to chase an inside fastball, and this is a mistake. Trying to go away with the heater. They leave it on the inner part of the plate, and he hits a rope into the bullpen in left field. Tied it up. Outside. Big Joey Manessis in the bottom of the sixth for Mexico. Rowdy Telez, Isak Paredes will follow. Almeida, the lefty, remains. Misses down low. You got Telez, a left handed bat behind Manessis. Rosarena has half of the hit total for Mexico. He had that double in the first. He hit the double better than he hit the home run, and he smoked the home run. That one rolled into center field, and Manessis is aboard with his second hit. Yeah, he's just one of those guys that knows how to put the bat on the ball. He had a base hit to center his last time up and came around to score the first run for Team Mexico. Now he gets a leadoff single here, just right back up the middle. Not a bad pitch. It's away from him, but he stays on it, and that bat stays in the hitting zone, and he comes up with a single to start the inning. Right now you got lefty on lefty action and you got Rowdy Telez who's popped out and bounced out. Infield extreme shift. And Almeida's fastball is up. If you're just joining us once again the new rules which everyone's ironing out in spring training are not in effect for the World Baseball Classic. So shifting is allowed. The bases are the same size as they were in 2002. That's a pretty good breaking ball. Just missed. And Telez sitting on a 2 0 count. Now, Brownie's hit well throughout his career against lefties. He's actually got a better batting average against lefties than he does righties. He's never been a real high average hitter, but he's at 245 against the Southpaws. One thing he does, he has tremendous power to the opposite field. I mean, obviously, you mentioned it, right? He's a big kid, and he's got a lot of power. Two one pitch. He's from Elk Grove High School. Buck, that's your neck of the woods. Yeah, I went to Elk Grove High School a couple of years before Rowdy. <laughs> what is the uh, what is the mascot for Elk Grove? Thundering herd. The Elk Grove Thundering herd. Thundering herd. Yeah. For, for the Elks. Elks. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, Rowdy. He was a part of a group of young players that came out of there. Dylan Carlson with the Cardinals. Yeah, that went to Elk Grove as well. Yeah, that whole Sacramento area has been a hotbed of Major League Baseball for a long time. Yeah. 
Now, Rowdy, I met Rowdy when he was a senior in high school at a fundraising dinner for the baseball team. He went out to speak to the team, and he was serving dinner. Really? Yeah. He was one of the team members, and he was serving dinner. Big year for Rowdy last year with Milwaukee, 35 long balls. Rowdy came up with the Blue Jays in 2018 and hit four home runs in just 23 at bats. He had quite a start to his career. Nine doubles in those 70 ABs. He had a couple homers in the division series loss to Atlanta for Milwaukee. That one outside and it pops off the glove of Diaz. And Mexico's in business now runner in scoring position and a full count on Telez. Yeah and here's another decision do you challenge Telez? You got a righty on deck. Now Rader has to face three batters. Telez would be his final batter, and catcher just let that one get off his glove. Ball sailed on him, and that moves the runner into scoring position. Now catcher's out to talk to his lefty. I wouldn't give Rowdy much to hit right now. You can bet he's changed his sights a little bit. They got a right-hander ready in the bullpen, Julio Vivas. So I wouldn't give Rowdy anything. He can put the bat on the ball here. You got a base open. No reason to challenge him. You got the right-hander Paredes on deck. Three-two. Soft roller, and that'll get the job done. It'll move the runner 90 feet. Although Telez would have rather knocked it in the gap. Still, Mexico's got the go-ahead run. At third base by right, rules and regulations from 2022 a few adjustments designated hitters use mound visit rule is not adopted three batter minimum yep check we've already done that pitcher use limitations check but we, as we told you no shifts no larger bases and the pitch timer is not here and mound visits. You can uh, make as many mound visits as you could before that rule was enforced as well. As uh, Holbert Cabrera is doing. 3 3, back after this. It's been a terrific ball game. First game, Pool C in Phoenix. 3 3 game in Columbia. To the bullpen once again, their third reliever, Julio Vivas. Independent ball in 2022. And his job is to keep the runner at third base with one out. Isak Paredes is the hitter. An RBI single in the fourth for him for Mexico. Remember, Mexico had a runner at third with one out in the first. And Nabil Krizmat, the starter, was able to get out of it with a ground ball and a pop up. Infield is in, and they are shifted towards that left side. And here is Paredes. Vivas. Strike. First pitch breaking ball. And, you know, we have talked about Paredes. Uh, he came up with a big RBI back in the fourth inning. He's pretty good breaking ball hitter. I wouldn't just flip it up there thinking you can get him to swing and miss a breaking ball. He's a pretty good breaking ball hitter. Hit hard, but right to Frias at short. On to first low throw. And it is safe at first, but it doesn't get by Rodriguez enough for the runner to advance. Colombia does not get the out. Mexico does not get the run but at the corners now with one out. Yeah and that's just an unfortunate situation Rodriguez over at first base kind of lets the ball get away from him. the shortstop flips it and the ball sails a little bit and it tipped off his glove and he stretches and just didn't stretch far enough to make the catch boy that's a big mistake by Colombia and they're fortunate that the ball didn't get much farther past the first baseman to hold the runner at third. 
That looked like a catchable ball, and of course, it was Rodriguez, the first baseman, who hit the two run homer to provide a 3 1 lead. Now the infield's back and looking for a ground ball as an escape hatch to this inning. Rios, swing and a miss. Way out in front, and Vivas with an 0 1 count. Even Urshela is back at third base. Paredes doesn't run well, but he did steal a base back in the fourth. They show bunt, but not a squeeze. Safety squeeze and the runner at third base has to hold up until the ball is bunted fairly on the ground. So Benji Gill put the safety squeeze on. That's and a the runners have to read the bat and if the bunter at the plate puts it on the ground then you break. And if you bunt it ideally you want to bunt it toward the second baseman. That's the best place to put it. Long been a popular play with Joe Madden. With the Rays and the Cubs they used to run that. With precision. Yeah, it's a play to stay out of a double play, and it can get you a run. Oftentimes, it ends up with the defense not being able to record an out. Because if you execute it perfectly, you bunt it toward the second baseman, he's got to come and make the play. It's past the pitcher, and everybody's safe in the school to run. But the base runners have to be patient enough to wait for the ball to be on the ground. It's not a suicide squeeze. Luis Urias, couple postseasons with Milwaukee, has power. 16 home runs last year. That might be two. Frias Diaz got the double play, and Colombia gets out of the inning. Julio Vivas gets the ground ball he needed. All right, both teams outside of that air by the first base and have really played good defense. Nice patient play by Frias the shortstop to Diaz the second baseman over to Rodriguez to end the inning and strand the base runner. Still 3 3 in the desert in the World Baseball Classic. We arrive in the seventh inning in a 3 3 game. Colombia and Mexico. Luis Sessa threw nine pitches last inning, and he opens up the top of the seventh. Jorge Alfaro, Elias Diaz, and Reynaldo Rodriguez. Alfaro pounded one off the wall in deep left center field. And a strike. Alfaro signed with the Texas Rangers, and then he throughout his career has been involved in two huge trades. He went from Texas to the Phillies for Cole Hamels and Jake Diekman and then he went from Philadelphia to Miami for J.T. Realmuto. Big power hitting catcher prospect in the minors and he has made it to the big leagues and they always thought he was going to have big power his biggest home run season came in 2019 with the Marlins he had 18 home runs and drove in 57 as impressive as the double was and it nearly got out at about 400 feet the fact that he broke up the perfect game from Arias was even more impressive and then Colombia would follow Elias Diaz knocking him in with an RBI double and that's when Rodriguez would then hit a two run homer off the foul pole in left field and Colombia had grabbed the lead at 3 1. There's Rodriguez. He's two batters away. He's in the hole. One, two. That one is lined to left. That's a base hit, and it's by a Rosarena. And it gets into that corner, and Alfaro is digging around second, and he'll hold there. Boy, have a day. A couple doubles. The flowing hair, the gold elbow protector, and a lot of spirit. 
Well, he signed with the Red Sox and was having a bang up spring training. As I mentioned earlier, seven for 10 in spring training with a pair of doubles. And that serves him well in game one of this World Baseball Classic. He's got a pair of doubles already in this game. He's two for three. Struck out the first time, and he gets another leadoff double. That's what got things going back in the fifth. So the seventh opens just like the fifth with a double from Alfaro. Here is Diaz. He doubled to knock Alfaro in back in the fifth. That one's foul back. This is the third at bat with runners in scoring position for Columbia. They're two of two. We mentioned they were eliminated back in 2017. They lost to Team USA 3 to 2. They beat Canada 4 to 1. And then they were on the verge of beating Dominican Republic. And they had the winning run thrown out of the plate in the bottom of the ninth inning. Jose Bautista made a terrific throw from left field to nail the potential winning run at the plate. And then the Dominican just obliterated. Team Columbia in extra innings. They eventually won that game 10 to 3. And what makes it even more painful, they lost to the U.S. in a tight one, 3 to 2. Right hander in the bullpen for Mexico. 0 oh, 2. And Sessa trying to get a punch out here. That was Cesar Vargas, the right hander in Mexico's bullpen. Now, far the runner at second in a 3 3 game. You know, this is what managers talked about. We had a chance to visit with all the managers in this pool, and they talk about how quickly your thoughts change according to the score. And now you're going to go ahead and use your premier relievers in this game with a chance to win it. Both managers know how important this game one is. That is strike three. And so there's one out. We check in with JP. JP? Thanks, Rich. Orlando Cabrera coaching first base right now, but between innings, his voice was the loudest. Yes, he turned about 1,200 double plays in the major leagues, but this might have been his all time favorite, keeping this game tied 3 3. The brothers Cabrera, Orlando, and Holbert, they're in uniform on the same team at the same time for the first occasion since the 1997. Ottawa Lynx in the Montreal Expos organization. That's yeah, terrific. Yeah. yeah, they split from there and yeah. never to return until now. And Holbert told us yesterday, JP, that uh, Orlando really likes this coaching stuff. He's starting to get into it. He had been away from baseball for a while, but then got the opportunity to join his brother in this tournament. And he said he's really enjoyed getting back on the field. It's a huge strikeout for Sessa. And now Ronaldo Rodriguez, who's lined to left and then homered to left. There they are. I think mom arrived here yesterday for this nice moment. <laughs> Homer told us a great story how his mom received the key to their city, and the mayor was making a speech to present the key to you. Cabrera's mom and she grabbed the mic in mid sentence and said it's about time you gave me the key to the city I've taught for 40 years and I've got two major league sons. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Josefina. Ramirez. Up the middle off the pitcher and into right field that's a base hit how far around third he's going to score and Columbia's back on top. Boy, Ronaldo Rodriguez for a late replacement who wasn't supposed to be here, a two run homer, and now an RBI single. Uh, he has had so many games of experience. He's 36 years old. He's played literally all over the world. And he comes up with his second big hit of this game. It's a breaking ball. He stays on and actually hits the pitcher, Sessa. And then Karam's into right field. Alfaro's going to score easily as that ball went off the pitcher. 
And again, Rodriguez comes up with a big RBI, his third of the ball game. And O'Farrell got it started with a leadoff double. Second time he's scored in this game. You know, sometimes in this World Baseball Classic, it's a player like this who hasn't had major league experience or major league accomplishments. First pitch is in. And yet, is a decorated international player who steps into this tournament and has big moments. I think of Vladimir Ballantin for the Netherlands. You see the umpire Corey Blazer is getting on the Colombian bench taking exception to their jawing on him. He heard some barking from their dugout and quickly turned into the dugout and said that'll be enough. Ball the dirt check swing no swing. And it's one and one. This is the pitch that created the controversy from the dugout as he calls it a strike. Look, like it might have been off the plate. And then the bench of the Colombian team got on the home plate umpire and he said, That'll be enough, boys. I've heard enough. There's a foul at the plate with the runner going. And Rodriguez. Despite his age and experience, still trying to steal a bag. Jordan Diaz with the count one and two. Another lead for Colombia in what is an enormously important game to open up Pool C. Chopper, third, it's fair, out there. Out there. How about that? Paredes Urias to Telez. The double play for Mexico, but a run for Colombia. Terrific defensive play at third, and he starts the double play. Paredes from foul territory throws a strike to second. Urias delivers the throw to end the inning. Terrific double play. Terrific game. Seventh inning stretch. 4 3, Colombia. La isla de Tecosalandia, que si queda gasolina, tengo más que arabia. Lo que manda es el perreo, nunca cambia. Lo que manda es el perreo, nunca cambia. Great scene here in Phoenix. Bottom of the seventh inning. Colombia, a 4 3 lead over Mexico. Large crowd, most of them pulling for Mexico. But Colombia took a 3 1 lead, saw Mexico tie it on a Randy Arozarena home run, and Colombia is back on top. Alan Trejo, the hitter, and he swings and misses. Reaver San Martin, the lefty out of Cartagena, 26 year old. Up the middle, Frias, and an out. A lot of ground ball outs for this Columbia infield. Yep, yeah, and they've done a good job, man. Revis was charged with the air back in the sixth inning. I of the mind it should have been charged to the first baseman. It looked like a catchable throw that he didn't catch, and Revis took the air, but they have played good defense. Paredes, the third baseman for Mexico, made a terrific start to yeah. a double play to end that last inning. Swing and a miss by Alec Thomas. This is the bottom third of the order for Mexico. Austin Barnes to follow. Liner into center field. Thomas with his speed is on base. Well, what a pretty swing. He stayed on that breaking ball and didn't try to do too much. Just took it right back up the middle. He is now one for three. He is grounded out and hit into a fielder's choice. Watch the swing, how long the bat stays in the hitting zone. It's a breaking ball and he stays right on it. Head stayed down, good level swing, and he's rewarded with a line drive base hit. 
A one out single here in the seventh. Good looking young player. They didn't shy away from that lefty offering at all. Now the Diamondbacks have a, a really talented young outfield. He's certainly part of it. Here's Barnes now. San Martin. Misses for ball one. Barnes has bounced out twice. Well, back in the fifth inning in a same situation with Thomas at first, they started the runner. That play hit and run with Barnes at the plate. Columbia is aware of that and they'll check in on the runner. Diaz again strong arm. Thomas has a good sized lead. San Martin chases him back. Little looper right center and it falls. Mercado has it. Thomas stops at second. And Mexico with runners at first and second. And now the top of their order and Randy Arozarena. Can he do it again? Well I don't think he's going to get to do it against the lefty because San Martin has faced the minimum three. And Holbert Cabrera has motion to the bullpen. They want a right hander to face a Rosarena who has doubled and has homered and is two for three. There you go with the scouting report. Bobby Magianis, the hitting coach, going over the new pitcher coming into the game. Going to be number 72, Pedro Garcia. Big at bat coming up for Mexico. Fabian Pertuz at second base for Colombia. He takes over for Jordan Diaz. Randy Rosarena started his day out with a bang on the first pitch he saw. He ropes his fastball, came off the bat at 109 miles an hour, and then in the fifth inning with a man aboard and two outs, this line drive ball. Bullpen home run was hit at 112 miles an hour. He loves fastballs. And now there's no place to put him in this situation. Runners at first and second. It's about as high leverage as you can get here for Pedro Garcia, who was in the minor leagues last year and had good numbers. And about a Kaibo, Venezuela. First and second, one out. Goes after the first pitch and chops it wide of third. A little out in front of that off speed pitch. And Rosarena, we mentioned what a good fastball hitter he is. He hit the first pitch fastball to center. San Martin. Tough spot, take him out of the game. Go to Garcia to face a Rosarena. Garcia out of the Reds organization, double A and triple A last year. And a Rosarena chases. And the big slow breaking ball way out in front. It never was a strike. It's off the plate at the start of this pitch, and he chased a bad one there. Lefty bat in Verdugo is on deck. Remember, Colombia was out in front of a Rosarena 0 and 2 in the fifth. And then a fastball that strayed into the middle of the plate was pounded.
Garcia one two. He'll pop up down the right field line and Ramirez is there makes the catch runner tags and Thomas is going to get to third base. And Ramirez is motioning out in right field. He didn't want to throw the ball all the way to third. He didn't want the trail runner to move up. So he simply threw that ball into second base. Yeah, they made Rosarina hit a breaking ball and he popped it up to right field. Watch Thomas, the second base runner. He's going to go back, assesses that it's going to be caught and he's got good speed. And Ramirez makes a good decision here because that runner at first base represents the go ahead run. So you keep him out of scoring position. Thomas advances over to third now. Barnes is still at first. And now Pedro Garcia will go to work on Alex Verdugo, who's 0 for 3. Mexico has had a lot of opportunities with runners in scoring position. And they are two for ten in the ball game. At the corners with two outs. Two and oh. Verdugo, of course, with the Red Sox had a good year last year, 280 with 74 ribbies. He got a chance to at least tie it up in this situation. Columbia now with the defensive sign should the runner at first base break. Maybe Mexico tries to steal a run in this situation, but I just as soon let Verdugo hit. He's got the count in his favor. Garcia is either having trouble throwing strikes or is just being really cautious against Verdugo and, and wants would rather face Manessis the right handed bat although he's got two hits. Yeah I still wouldn't throw Verdugo a fastball even though it's a 3 0 count. See if you can get him to chase a breaking ball. Oh he threw him a fastball and gets the call 96. That caught the zone. Verdugo reacted like he thought it was in, but that was a strike. They might start to run her in this situation. Three and one. Barnes at first, Thomas at third. Bouncer up the middle, in the center field. Mexico ties it again. Racing for third is Barnes. They shifted Verdugo, but not that extreme of a shift. And he snuck it through. Verdugo's had four at bats. He's hit four ground balls, and this one was a base hit. It sneaks through the infield. And that big league experienced hitter in Verdugo, he had a 3 1 count. There's this shift. You can see the second baseman way out there and right, but the shortstop stays on the shortstop side of second, and Frias can't keep it on the infield. Beyond his reach, it sneaks by, and again, we are tied. Good at bat by Verdugo, and he sees it sneak through and celebrates the RBI. Back and forth so far in game one. This has been a lot of fun. Both starters looked really, really good, and then they didn't. <laughs> and especially Julio Arias, who threw four perfect innings, and they got jumped for three runs in the fifth. Walter Miranda, the pitching coach for Colombia, for Holbert Cabrera. And now here is Manessis. Right back again with runners at the corners. I would make Manessas hit the fastball. We have seen Garcia's fastball up to 96. 
Manessas is a very good breaking ball hitter and likes the ball out over the plate. High pop up. Should be playable. Rodriguez calls and catches. And Colombia has their second lead disappear. Mexico draws even again. Nothing decided into the eighth. It's 4-4. Four, four. All right, just in case you were wondering, this rule is in effect, and it really started in the World Baseball Classic. Look, we saw it over in Japan a while ago, beginning the 10th, just like Major League Baseball, runner at second base. And the runner is the batter that preceded the leadoff hitter in the respective half inning before. Both managers are having to go into their bullpen. Jacob Sanchez is the latest reliever for Mexico. And he'll be greeted by Maybreeze Villarea as a pinch hitter for Colombia. Villarea just signed a minor league deal with Cleveland. He's 26 years old. Big shift for him and a strike. Fifty four games a year ago in Triple A with the Rangers had five homers and twenty eight ribbies. Four runs and five hits for Columbia. And all of those runs and all of those hits are concentrated in the four five six spot. Villarreal pinch hitting here in the eight spot in the order. Jorge Alfaro's got two doubles and scored twice. Elias Diaz has an RBI double. And Reynaldo Rodriguez, the veteran international star, a two run homer and an RBI single. That is Colombia's day offensively. Whew. That uh, caught plenty of the plate and was not low. And as you saw, Villarreal questioning home plate umpire Corey Blazer. And that one misses down low, and so the count's three and two. This is the first three ball count all day on a Colombian hitter. For those of you scoring at home. There's a drive to left center field hit pretty well. Thomas going back deep there and he makes the catch. That you mentioned Thomas plays here and understands the field very well. Boy he got a good break on contact. Knew he had plenty of room and watch where he starts. Kind of shallow in center field, and this ball is going to slice away from him, but he stays with it. One stride onto the winning track to haul it in. He's quite comfortable here in this ballpark, and he helped his outfield teammates, reminding them, hey, you got to play the gaps here pretty effectively, and you got to back each other up whenever that ball is hit into the alley. Yeah, he said, look, I told everybody anything over my head or into center field, you got to crash because. The wall behind him is is crazy with caroms. If, if you can say that. I mean crazy with caroms, Buck. Because that's a that's a solid wall. Look at all the little angles and the things yeah. that you can that they can misdirect a baseball. Yeah, you gotta stay with it. And there's a lot of padding and of course in right center there's the pool and the padding halfway up and then the fence and lots of things going on out there in the outfield. And he said if you go back hard and you don't get the ball, the danger is the ball hits that wall and, and really ricochets hard back towards the diamond. They went foul back. Day and Frias in the nine spot. 
Mexico has eight hits with their four runs. Colombia has been the most efficient. They haven't left anybody on base. And Mexico has struggled at times with runners in scoring position. They've stranded five. Mm, three for 12 with runners in scoring position. You can see the shift. That's an interesting shift and that Urias is not out in the outfield because the battery is not particularly a powerful hitter but he'll pull the ball on the ground so they're not that deep on the right side. You know you never really know what the players are going to do in the first game of this series but it looked like the pitchers were going to dominate and then the batters got a little bit into the flow of the game and they came around and started scoring runs in the bottom of the fourth and now we're tied at 4 4 here in the eight it's just kind of what we expected. Two two is foul back and out of play. Of course there's. In all of the pools, two games a day. And the second game tonight, he's got Great Britain making their World Baseball Classic debut against Team USA. Adam Wainwright, a longtime Cardinal pitcher, will start for Team USA. High fastball and a swing and a miss. J.P. Morosi. Yes, Rich. Two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. Alex Verdugo on first base. Ball in the air off the bat of Joy Manessis, but curiously, he did not run. It appears he forgot how many outs there were in the moment as he was then reminded by the first base coach. This, to me, Rich, just speaks to where we are at in the tournament and the pressure of it. It's so much about managing the energy the noise here at field level and Buck I have to say you made a great point with that 3 1 count on Verdugo when he was at the plate had Barnes been running with that pitch perhaps Mexico right now has a 5 4 lead. Yeah and it's just one of those things that you you try to anticipate what's going to happen here and Verdugo hit four ground balls and that last one got through there and Barnes wasn't able to come around he went to third but that was it. I think all five managers addressed what JP was talking about in the, the jarring shift from spring training mode into must win mode as in crucial game mode in a game like this that feels like a postseason game. Well you only play four games right <laughs> you don't have a whole <laughs> lot of time You're like regular season you, know, you play series. This is not about playing a series. You have four games. How many times did, and that's a strike, did Mark DeRosa tell us yesterday when we sat down with him, how many times did he tell him, yeah, hey, look, I've 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 told the boys it's go time. And then I didn't feel like they got the message, so I told them again. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. Let's go. Yeah you, you have a message you speak to your team when you first gather them and say OK you know, this is going to be a big deal and then you remind him this is going to be a big deal and he did that yesterday before they worked out here. Pulled sharply down the third baseline. Of course there's there's plenty of guys on that roster that don't don't really need to hear that. Uh, a lot but still you, you got to deliver that message but they've never played in this kind of atmosphere most of them you know playing in the World Baseball Classic for the first time yeah they've played in all star games and playoff games and all of that but this is different I mean, you don't have a chance it's not a seven game series right you don't see a sombrero like that ordinarily or you might more if Mexico advances out of this pool that might become a standard for the Mexican players. Good at bat here for Oscar Mercado. Leadoff hitter who's bounced out twice and popped out. Hits that one foul. And 
the count stays at three and two. The team that's not playing in Pool C is Canada. At least not playing today. They play tomorrow. Great Britain and Canada. Boy, a quick turnaround for Great Britain, who plays the U.S. tonight, and then show and go tomorrow at noon here in Phoenix against Canada. Mexico gets the United States tomorrow night. High fastball and a swing and a miss. And Jake Sanchez goes one, two, three through Colombia in the eighth. Tie game for a piece. Mexico trying to take the lead here. Here's the upcoming schedule. We talked about tonight. Great Britain and the United States. Doubleheader tomorrow all the way through Wednesday. Some really good games in there. The Mexico United States game will be lit as the kids say. Canada U.S. will be good as well. And we start the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, the intensity for both of these teams is really interesting based on who they play next. Because Colombia will play Great Britain next on Monday, but Mexico has to play Team USA tomorrow. Teles pops it up. That's out in front of the plate. Diaz now wanders into foul territory and makes the catch. Second time Teles has popped up to the catcher. First inning he did that, and that one beat him as he pops out to start the inning. All right, Japan is the only ones who have punched a ticket in the other pools. And of course, they've started those pools early for travel reasons so that the four that advance out of there can get to Miami and acclimate themselves and actually play some games against some of the uh, spring training teams. Isaac Paredes, the hitter for Mexico. His RBI single back in the fourth, a stolen base. Two veterans at the top of the order have the big hits the Rosarena, the two run homer, and the double. Verdugo, the RBI single. Gustavo Campiero is in right field, and that pushes. Harold Ramirez from right to left and Jesus Mariaga is out of the game. And Pedro Garcia into his second inning of relief. Garcia's got a good fastball. That last pitch was 96 and Paredes couldn't get around on it. He got some pretty good run on that pitch when he gets it upstairs inside to the right hand. Think these guys are having any fun? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Six miles an hour with that fastball. Mexico has not had to go as deep into their bullpen as Colombia has gone. Four innings from Nabil Chrismat, the starter for Colombia. Julio Arias went five for Mexico. That's into right center field. And Mercado is over there to make the catch. And with Urias coming to the plate, Benji Gill enjoying himself. With more on that, here's JP Morosi. 
Rich certainly enjoying himself, but he understands the pressure and the greater significance of this tournament. We saw a moment ago that beautiful sombrero in the stands that had all the nations in it from the most recent Soccer World Cup. And Mexico did not advance out of group play in the Soccer World Cup. And Benji said earlier today that he hopes this event, the World Baseball Classic, is Mexican sports redemption after that disappointing Soccer World Cup. Hey, JP, I think, you know, listening to him today, one of the really fascinating things was hearing him talk about pressure in the World Series compared to pressure playing for your country or even playing for his uh, city. And he said he felt, look, he felt more pressure sometimes in Winter League or in playing for Mexico than he did playing for the Angels in the 2002 World Series. It's an excellent point, Rich. And I often think when young players come up to the major leagues, when they have played internationally, winter ball, a tournament like the World Baseball Classic, they are so well prepared. And in fact, earlier today, Benji was saying in an interview that he hopes he has the chance at the end of the day to compare what it feels like to win a World Series to what it feels like to win a World Baseball Classic. Yeah, that's good thinking. Thank you, JP. Mexico certainly has the talent and the starting pitching to do that. That is strike three called. Garcia goes one, two, three in the eighth against Mexico. Four, four. Heart of the order coming up. Ramirez, Urshela, and Jorge Alfaro. To the ninth we go. Top of the ninth in Phoenix and a huge decision for Team Mexico manager Benji Hill Giovanni Gallegos his best reliever is now in a tie game and Rich and Buck this could have tremendous implications for the entire tournament for Team Mexico if he pitches tonight there is no guarantee he'll be ready to pitch tomorrow against Team USA. Yeah and it's all based on pitch count and when you look at it if the pitcher throws 50 pitches two consecutive days you have to have a rest so if he throws 30 or more pitches in this game he has to have two days off he can pitch in back to back games as long as he's efficient with his pitch count. So it's interesting and uh, it's going to be something that. You keep an eye on but obviously this is a pivotal point in this ball game where you are in the order two three four for Columbia. First pitch swing Harold Ramirez a healthy hack. And. The count 0 and 1 you see Ramirez today and 0 for 3 day. As we noted. An inning ago. The damage. For Columbia has been. The four five and six hitters. Alfaro Diaz and Reynaldo Rodriguez. That's a foul ball. And Gallegos. Who certainly has pitched in the postseason with the Cardinals. Four 14. times. Yep. 14 saves in each of the last two seasons. He's got a fastball. Very good changeup. He throws a slider. His fastball will touch 95 96 and his changeup is very good. High fastball knocked into left center field and it falls for a hit. That's a difficult pitch to get to. And he did it. Yeah, and Gallegos, we mentioned he's got a good fastball and he'll use it upstairs. Let's take a look at his arsenal. Four seam fastball, he throw about half the time. Fastball slider mostly. And those two pitches, they're hard to square up. He's only hit 208 against his four seamer and 183 against the slider. So Ramirez is aboard. And Gallegos faces Gio Urshela, who pulls it to third. Paredes, Urias, that's two. Well, I tell you what, Isak Paredes is not really known for his glove, but he has played a heck of a third base today. He had a tough double play that he started back in the seventh, but the throw on this double play is what's impressive. He hangs his ground, holds his ground, and then fires a strike. Look where this throw is, right to the heart of the chest of the second baseman, Urias, who makes quick work of it. Paredes has had a heck of a day with the glove at third base. 
And the added bonus of getting two outs is that you don't have to face Alfaro with the runner on, and Alfaro has had two doubles in his last two at bats. And as Buck has pointed out, he's hitting the absolute cover off the ball in spring training and has arrived here in the World Baseball Classic and continues to do so. Yeah, he's trying to win a job with the Red Sox, and boy, he's made an impression early on with his bat. Yeah, I got to throw him another fastball. He's ahead right now, and Gallegos can elevate the heater on the inner half. Just got a piece. 94, but he got it away from him. I'm of the mind that you pitch aggressively when you have a hitter 0 2 that's when he's most vulnerable you see pitchers try to set him up and work the count well each time a hitter sees more pitches he has more information go after him right here. O2 again. Buried that slider. <laughs> Trying to throw it too good. I always love that on pitch tracks because the the little ball doesn't show up anywhere near the square. It, it you could see it literally digging into the grass. Watch this. Not what it was designed for, but it's always cool to see it land right there. <laughs> That's a 55 foot breaking ball. Let's see if he comes back with a fastball. That's how he got his first two strikes. <laughs> and Alfaro in stay in alive mode. Yeah, but they were trying to elevate the fastball, and Alfaro had a chance to get to it because it was down. I don't think he can handle the fastball if he gets it upstairs and elevates it. See the target? It's high, but he misses low, and he got away with one right there. It's always tough as a hitter now. Do you do you cheat a little bit to catch up and guess fastball? No, you can't. Round with two strikes, you got to fight off the fastball. Got him. 95. Elevated. He got the pitch up where he wanted to and it punches out of fire. Welcome to the World Baseball Classic, Giovanni Gallegos. 4 4 to the bottom of the ninth. Benji Gill used his big arm out of the bullpen, an important part of the game. And he's got Alfaro at the plate, and here's the pitch sequence. He elevates the fastball on the first pitch. Another fastball. He's really got him in a hole now. And he missed his location a little bit away, buries the slider way out in front of home. Again, down and away, but then he elevates the fastball, and he went right to the weakness of Alfaro and punches him out. So he faced just three batters after he got the double play off the bat of Urshela and then strikes out Alfaro, who'd had a good day to that point. First pitch is strike one, and it's thrown by the right hander out of the pen, Guillermo Zuniga. And he's facing Jonathan Aranda, a pinch hitter for Mexico. Rondo, who really had a great year in Triple A last year in the Rays organization, hit 318, 394 on base, slugged 521, 18 homers. Made his major league debut last year for 32 games. And that didn't look comfortable after the delivery, almost like he caught a spike. Uh, and you're going to. Go out and make sure he's okay. And I kind of staggered and stumbled off the mound. And obviously, that's a big concern early in the season. Just how ready are these pitchers to throw 100? 
So the trainer's coming out to to check, and now they're going to allow him to throw a pitch or two. It looks like he said, "No, I just caught my spike and kind of stumbled down the mound." So he's going to get a couple of pitches here to make sure he's okay. So is 6'5 and weighs 230, and he can bring it. Pitched in Double A with the Cardinals last year, and that's a very welcome sight to see him stay out there. Watch this as the pitch, and you can see he kind of lost his footing and stumbled awkwardly off the mound and hit that hole out in front in his landing area and just kind of lost his balance. That's a strike. 99. With an attitude. Well, and, and both managers have their closer basically in the game now. Here we are on the bottom of the ninth. It will be interesting to see if this game does get to the tenth, and again you have the runner that starts the inning at second, if both managers stick with those closers. That's a good approach there against that hard fastball as Randy just tried to slap it the other way. It was away from him. That you made a good point about Randy had a terrific season Triple A Durham. But then he got to the big leagues and got 87 plate appearances hit under 200. Just a little bit of an adjustment. He's only 24 years old. Got a bright future. Leading off bottom of the ninth 2 2. Check swing. Did he go? Yes. That is strike three. Ivo Mendoza, the third base umpire, brings him up for the swing. A hard slider down and in. He'd seen 99 earlier in his bat, so he starts the swing and can't check in time. And it's a wicked breaking ball. No spin, and yeah, he went around. Good call by the third base ump. This will give you a better look at how far he committed. He got out in front. Big first out. Now Thomas, who singled back in the seventh. <laughs> Told you the the bright young outfielders for the Diamondbacks. Thomas certainly in that. Uh, Group Corbin Carroll another Carroll's really good young short really fast outfit and they got a lot of young speed in their outfit good young shortstop coming their way as well Jordan Lawler Austin Barnes on deck. You know we're in the bottom of the ninth and the prospects of going to extra innings are pretty prominent and it's interesting Alfaro made the last out in the top of the ninth so he would be the base runner to start at second base for Robert Cabrera. You just wonder if they would think about pitch running for him and start somebody with more speed at second chopper to first Rodriguez the out. So when you put your roster together you think about these types of situations who can I have on my bench should we get into a tie game and I need some speed at second. So how far would be the base runner at second base if we go to extra innings. He made the last out of the top half of the ninth. He's been their best hitter. Yeah do you take him do out? You take him out because <laughs> you might see the 11th without him. <laughs> Now Barnes. Outside. Bottom nine, 4-4 four, four game. Crucial, crucial game. Two teams that have the talent to get to Miami. Lined into right center field. That's in there. To the wall it goes. Barnes racing for second. And the winning run 
in scoring position for Mexico with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. What a great at bat by Austin Barnes. His second hit of the ball game, an opposite field double to the wall in right center. With two outs, and obviously now you have an opportunity to get a Rosarena to the plate one more time. Good approach right here. It's a fastball on the outer half. He just goes with it and stays on it. And he comes up with a big clutch double here in the bottom of the ninth. That was a pitcher perfect swing against a guy that he hadn't faced before, but he knew he was dealing with some velocity. And this goes back to that fifth inning when a Rosarena came to the plate and first base was open. Rosarena had smoked a double in the first. They are going to pinch run. Mexico is pinch run at second base. And they're going to walk a Rosarena. And a Rosa. That's an amazing phenomena there, Buck. That was a pinch running replacement and an intentional walk all at the same time. <laughs> a lot going on. It was the pitch runner Cardona was running on the field while the Columbia team was walking the Rosarena. Very nice. That's efficient. Now Columbia's bench there talking to the outfit. You can't play deep in this situation. They really called Mercado in to play shallow in center and they're they got Ramirez in left now. He started in right. And of course Verdugo delivered an RBI single in the seventh. A ground ball that found the outfield up the middle. Big swing and miss. 1 0 1. Jose Cardona, the pinch runner. A one. <laughs> Triple digits again. I mean, he is just letting it eat. Yeah, you don't want to get beat with your second pitch in this situation, so I would imagine you're not going to take a chance. Try to elevate another fastball and get Verdugo. Guillermo Zuniga. O2. He got him. Oh my goodness. 102. He went 101, 100, and then dialed it up to 102. And that's that. And on we go to the 10th inning. Crucial game to open up Pool C. And we're going extras. It's been a, a whale of an opener in Pool C. Extra innings, here we go. Teams start each half inning with a runner on second base, and that runner, of course, the batter that preceded the leadoff hitter in order for respective half innings. It's a rule that we saw Buck, you and I in Japan a couple times, 13 and 17. Yeah, and adopted by Major League Baseball about four years later. It was implemented because of the compact nature of the tournament you couldn't have an all of extended extra inning games and baseball has since implemented it in major leagues defensive change with Barnes out it's Alexis Wilson the catcher I saw him catching the Colorado game the other day he's got a strong arm a new pitcher into the ball game as well Jesus, Jesus Cruz, Cruz. right handed Gallegos what an inning he had and so I asked that question would would either skipper stick with the closer into the tenth if we got there and the answer for Mexico obviously is no here's Diaz and the pitch is outside this sets up pretty well for Colombia because you have Diaz who has an RBI double and you have Reynaldo Rodriguez with a two run homer and an RBI single on deck and then you get to the seven spot in the order. And it's really interesting where we are. You mentioned the Diaz at bat here in the fifth spot. Mexico 
In the bottom of the end, it'll be three, four, and five. Manessis, Tales, and Paredes, part of their order. And remember, we were talking about pinch runners, and obviously, it, you can see Alfaro in, in the shot. He's still in there. Not a ton of speed. That's deep enough. Maybe Alfaro will try to get to third. Verdugo the catch. Alfaro's going to try it. The throw is cut, and he's in there. Catchers everywhere representing. I know Buck Martinez gets a thrill out of that, seeing a catcher go second to third. He had a good job. He tagged out. The ball was hit deep, and Alfaro runs pretty well. And you made a great point. You don't want to lose his bat just for a pinch runner, so you keep him in. And watch how quickly he makes a judgment. He looks at Verdugo. He knows he's going to catch it, but Verdugo is awfully deep in right field, so he tags and advances on the fly ball out. Got over there pretty easily. Now the question is, do you pitch to Reynaldo Rodriguez? Well, that's what they're talking about on the mound right now. Pitching coach is out there, Elmer Sins, and they're having a conversation about what you want to do here to Rodriguez. He's had quite a day as he hits his home run back in the fifth inning, a two run shot. Long time minor leaguer coming through big time, and then he comes back in the seventh with an RBI single. And he has had a big day. Three RBIs. He's had two of the hits for Columbia and now the infield's going to come in and play at the edge of the grass with the go ahead run at third. So if they aren't going to intentionally walk him. How do you approach him. Well you got to try to crowd him I think he's better out over the plate he can extend and drive the ball the opposite way as well. In the dirt. They start throwing him off with a breaking ball. Yeah. Either you walk him or you go after him. You don't try to pitch around him in this situation. That's when pitchers will make mistakes. I used to hate to hear the term, hey, be careful with this guy. No, you tell me. You want me to walk him or you want me to try to get him out? <laughs> Rodriguez waits. Hits it hard. Diving stop there. It'll be an infield hit. But Paredes, once again, not known for his glove, makes an outstanding play. This might be one of the best games he's ever played with the glove because he has really done a great job. He started a double play in the seventh, made a terrific throw earlier in the ninth on a double play, and here he saves a run for sure. He doesn't have a play, but it keeps Alfaro from scoring. This looks like an extra base hit down the line, but he knocks it down, gets a glove on it, and holds Alfaro at third base. Boy, he has had a good game at third. And of course, this is the spot where Fabian Pertus came into the ball game. So it's Pertus now at the plate with runners at the corners. Infield is actually in. A bunt and he pops it right to Telez. And Pertus was taken out of the game for Diaz as he's a better defender. Diaz a much better offensive player and they tried to put the squeeze on there but Pertus popped it right to Telez. Again that was a safety squeeze hoping that he could bunt it on the ground toward the second baseman. But he lined it right to Telez. Runner at third is not breaking until he sees the ball safely on the ground, but it never happened. That's a big out. Now, double play will get him out of the inning. He just gets underneath it. He didn't get on top of the ball and popped it in the air and made an easy play for Telez. Two outs. Pardon me, there was a fly ball to right field. So now the infield up the middle back still even at third though is Paredes in case of a bunt for Campero. Gustavo Campero takes ball one. Extra innings. Alfaro started the inning at second. Rodriguez after the fly ball out an infield single. And 
Campero takes a strike, his first at bat. He had a great Caribbean series. He was named to the all tournament team. He came in as a defensive replacement after the Oregon pinch hit in the eighth. Rodriguez still at first. And that breaking ball is a strike. Compero watched it all the way in. Was in double A last year. One two. Columbia has delivered in these situations all afternoon four for seven with runners in scoring position. Mexico hasn't been as effective. Three for 13. They've had more opportunities. Those big hits though have come from the middle of the order. And Campero getting his first at bat in the eighth spot. Breaking ball. Soft hopper and it's dropped it short and Columbia has a run. Urias who had moved over from second. It was a tricky hop and that it had spin and it was soft. And it's 5 4. Campero got jammed and you're right Rich it had a lot of spin it wasn't hit that hard and. Trejo actually overran the ball a little bit and had to reach back forward and when he did it it went off the heel of his glove. So Alfaro comes in to score. And now it's Frias. Here's the play again. See the spin. See how he overran it and it kicks off the heel of his glove. That's Arias at shortstop now. Came in and switched from second to short. And that was a tough hop. That pitch is up. Well, the decision, I mean, there's a lot of decisions here. The decision. For Benji Gill was Giovanni Gallegos in the ninth, and that was it. In the tenth, he went deeper into his bullpen, and Jesus Cruz has come out. <laughs> Counts two and one. Yeah, and it's one thing you just say, okay, well, he was so efficient in the ninth, and we play USA tomorrow, then I can use him again in back to back games because he was that efficient. At the same time, you think, wow, I got to win this game, and you'd like to have Gallegos pitching here in the tenth. That's how important the decisions are in these games. And of course, in the bottom of the inning, Mexico will get a runner at second base. And they'll have a chance to tie it or to win it. At this point. Diane Frias awaits a 2-2. Down he goes. But Colombia scratches out a run. Luis Urias at shorts. Tricky spin. And a costly error. 5 4 Colombia to the bottom of the 10th. Last chance for Mexico. Boy, what an opener this has been. A crucial game to open up Pool C because you've got. Mexico and Colombia who have the talent to advance. Mexico is going to put a pinch runner at second base to open the bottom of the tenth. Jaron Duran.
Joey Menensis, Rowdy Telez, Isak Paredes, the heart of the order for Mexico. Duran can really run. A young Boston Red Sox outfielder. Breaking ball is a strike. And Benji Gill really likes Duran. Feels like he's a guy that is going to be a breakout player. He's running for Verdugo. Menensis, two singles. And Zuniga delivers. And so now, I mean, <laughs> the contrast here Mexico got an inning out of Gallegos and then went to Cruz in the 10th. But because of the way the schedule lands for Colombia, they're able to keep Zuniga in there, their closer, for a second inning. Yeah, Columbia has an off day before they play Great Britain on Monday. And, and that's a big strike out there. First out of the inning comes on a good fastball. Zuniga has got a big time on him. Robert Cabrera was really excited about having him as a closer. That those are two excitable guys. <laughs> the, can you imagine what it was like trying to get those two to go to sleep at night when they were kids? The Cabrera brothers. This is a big strikeout by Zuniga. Menensis almost looked like he was sitting something soft. Now Telez. Duran at second, and Telez takes out. Telez is 0 for 4, a couple of pop ups to the catcher. Big time power for Telez. Big time power for Zuniga. He's this been, is, been hitting triple digits. This is the beauty of baseball. Head to head, big arm, big power. That's a strike. 99 miles an hour. Yeah, Tellez is good with that. He just knew it was a tough pitch to hit. Trying to elevate the pitch, and he got the outside corner. A lot of run on that fastball at 99. One one pitch. In the air to the left. That's Ramirez who makes the catch. Now it's down to this. All of the back and forth. Mexico taking a lead. Colombia reclaiming it. Losing it. Now in extras Mexico's down to their last out. And a 5 4 Colombia lead. Paredes drove in the first run of the ball game with that RBI single to the left field in the fourth inning. And he's had a heck of a day defensively at third base. Now look, these Columbia fans are outnumbered immensely here in Phoenix. But man, are they excited. Zuniga, runner goes, pitch is taken, throw to third, and he steals it. Late to third was Urshela. He was holding with the pitch. And I'm almost surprised that, that Diaz even threw the ball. You're right. And defensively with two outs, you don't want your third baseman to take himself out of a defensive position. So the veteran was holding his ground, but then he had to go make the catch on the throw. Duran gets a good jump, and you can see Urshela. He only came over there because the catcher threw it. He was holding his ground defensively. Should there have been a base hit or a ground ball to the left side? But yeah, in that situation, managers are often tell their infield, stay put. I don't care if he steals in this situation. I don't want you to vacate your defensive position. And that's why Urshela was holding his ground at third. Holbert Cabrera came out and had a brief conversation with the home plate umpire, Corey Blazer. Tying run is at third. Bottom 10. Two outs.
Duran dancing at third 1 0 pitch. Fouled back. Boy, he's done a good job. He got that stolen base and now he's trying to distract the pitcher. One thing if I'm running at third you really got to think about that slider in the dirt a bouncing ball it doesn't have to be far for Duran to score. Hula Arias started this game was brilliant. He was perfect for four innings and then gave up a three spot in the fifth. That gave Colombia their first lead. Mexico then tied it. Colombia inched ahead. Mexico tied it. Colombia has the lead again here in the tenth with two outs. A runner at third for Mexico. And now a one two count on Isaac Paredes. Remember the slider that Zuniga bounced way out in front of home plate. If I'm catching right now, I'm really reluctant to call that slider. As a hitter, you're aware of that as well. Yeah. And you just got to honor it now because with two strikes, you can't look for a particular pitch. You just got to protect the plate. Zuniga ready. Paredes ready. One, two. Got him! Ball game! Colombia does it! He threw the slider and threw a good one and locks up Paredes. He didn't think he would come with a breaking ball, and what a game. Colombia back and forth all afternoon, and Zuniga was the secret weapon that Cabrera was counting on. If he got to a point where he could use him with the game on the line, he said, I'm going to stick with him. He throws 100, and he's got a wipeout slider. I'll tell you what, this is such a huge win for Colombia. Obviously, it gets them to 1 0 to start things. But both Colombia and Mexico have the ability and the talent to advance. They're in the same pool with USA. It gives Colombia the first tie break against Mexico if they finish with the same pool record, because obviously Colombia has won the head to head. And now Colombia has an off day before they play Great Britain on Monday. While Mexico has a quick turnaround, Pablo Sandoval will start against Team USA tomorrow night. Alfaro had a terrific game. Disappointing game for Mexico as they battled tooth and nail. They took the lead early, a one to nothing lead in the fourth inning. And then Colombia scored three, but this is a terrific call by Diaz, the catcher. I didn't think they would throw the slider. And he threw the best slider of the game did to you, end it. Did you think it was a strike? I think it was a strike. It was a tough pitch to lay off of, and I don't think Paredes ever expected that slider. Right. I thought there was a chance he could bounce the ball. It looked like it was off the plate, but it's just one of those pitches in that situation. It's tough to take it. And as you pointed out, the danger of that pitch for Colombia was he had bounced one, and if he bounced another, it could tie the game. Huge win for Colombia. We mentioned how close they were advancing in 2017. Now they've got a leg up, at least on Mexico. Unfinished business from the last World Baseball Classic, and this one is a huge step to erasing that that bitter feeling when they should have advanced back in 2017. Wow, what a way to start <laughs> Pool C. Colombia takes down Mexico. Huge crowd. Most of them here for Team Mexico. Urias was perfect until he wasn't. Our next game coming up, Great Britain and Team USA. For J.P. Morosi and Buck Martinez and our entire MLB Network World Baseball Classic crew, I'm Rich Waltz. We'll see you later tonight. Columbia with the win.